Hello, good morning, students. So, welcome to this new class, and we shall learn more about the resources, and especially today we shall learn about the land resources. The other classes, previous classes, we were learning about resources in general. Today we shall focus our attention to the land. Land is a natural resource, and how it can be used, how it can be misused, or how it can be spoiled, and so on, because of human activities. That is what we are going to learn today. So you can take your textbook, page number five. <coughs> the land resources, and we know the land is so important. Because we live on the land. The land is not there, where will we live? We cannot live in the water. No? So, are the, all the living beings, like the trees, the animals, except the marine animals, all others are living on the land. So, even the marine animals below the sea, it is the land. So, the land is very much for us to survive. And so we also perform all our activities, our economic activities on this land. For example, we cultivate things on the earth. We make factories on the land. We make road on the land. We make house on the land. Everything is done on the land. And we also use the land for different purposes. Some of them make and do a tourist place. Some of them are made for um, level for making houses, for making factories, and so on. So land has got so many uses. All of us are aware about that. Then the land is a natural resource of utmost importance. So we can underline that. Which natural resource is of utmost important? That is the land is the utmost important natural resource and it supports natural vegetation so land supports natural vegetation wild life all the animals then human life economic activities transport and communication systems so that is a uh, answer why do we call the land as the most at most important natural resource because it supports life it supports all kinds of life like it supports the natural vegetation it supports the uh, wildlife uh, human life economic activities transport and communication so all these are uh, supported by the land can like all these activities that are supported by on the land. That's why we call earth or the land as the most important natural resource. Then, land is an asset of finite magnitude. So it is not infinite, not unending. It is finite. That again means it can be destroyed, it can be changed, it can be lost and so on. So we should not think that land is permanent and it will remain forever. So it is of finite nature, not of permanent nature. Then, it is important to use the available land for various purposes with careful planning. So since it is not a permanent, or the land will not remain permanent forever, it will get spoiled, it will be, it can become a wasteland and so on. Therefore, whatever purpose we use the land for, we should use it with a careful planning. We should not just do whatever we like from the land because if you misuse, the land can get spoiled and it, will, it may become useless. So in, in order to avoid that, we need to do proper planning before we use the land. So how we make the buildings, how we use it for cultivation, how we use it for planting, how we use it for natural vegetation, the forest, how we use it for keeping wild animals. So all these should be properly planned. Then only the land will continue to remain useful. Otherwise, it may get 
fall and at the end we may have to suffer. So let us come to India, about our land, the land that is available in India. How much is good land, how much is waste land, all that let us see. So India has land under a variety of relief features. So we already said earlier that India has got different variety of physical features like hills are there, mountains are there, plateaus are there, plains are there, valleys are there, deserts are there, islands are there. So all these are different variety of physical features that are present in India. And then we can say around 43 percentage of the land area is plain. So in India, if you take 100 percentage of the land, so around 43 percentage, you can say it is plain. So around 43 percentage of the land is plain. Then And that provides facilities for agriculture and industry. So this plain land, what are the activities taking place there? Or taking place? Agriculture as well as industry. So lot of land is used for cultivation. It is used by farmers. And people are also setting up industry there. Mainly agro-based industry. So near to the farm, they do not, they construct a lot of so this plain land which is 43 percentage is used for agriculture as well as for industry. Then mountains account for 30 percentage. Then the second part is around 30 percentage. Mountains. So 30 percentage of the India's land is mountains, hills, so cannot do much work there, mostly forests are growing there in the 30 percentage of the mountain area and they ensure perennial flow of some rivers, so because of these mountains we have advantage as well, we continuously get flowing rivers, perennial means continuous. So, in the summer season as well as in the winter season, these rivers will be bringing water from the top of the mountain, especially from Himalaya side, a lot of uh, snow bound mountains are there. So, in the summer there will be rain water and uh, afterwards the snow will be melting and there will be flowing in the dry season, the snow will be melting and the water will be flowing in the river. So this rivers are perennial. Some of the rivers starting or originating from the mountains, they are perennial. Now the rest how many percentages are there? We have 27 percentage left. So what is this 27 percentage? They are plateaus. They are plateaus. Plateaus means level area but little higher. Not very plain, but it is a bit higher than the plain area. So, in this 27 percentage of the area in the plateau region, it possesses rich reserves of minerals, fossil fuels, and forests. So, this area is also very important. What do they provide? They provide a lot of minerals are found in this plateau region. Plateau regions we find most of the minerals, fossil fuel, fossil fuel means petroleum products like crude oil and so on. And also, a lot of forests are also found in this plateau region. So, these are the we can broadly categorize the land of India into three. One is the plain, that is, the majority 43 percent of the land is plain, which is used for agriculture as well as setting up of industry then 30 percentage we have mountains and these mountains are providing rivers which are perennially flowing with waters the dry season as well as in the wet season 
this rivers originating from the high mountains like Mayana, like Himalaya, the mountains are providing rainwater as well as snow water. Then the 27 percentage of the remaining land is plateau lands, which is also very rich in minerals, petroleum products, and so on. And they also provide a lot of forests there. So it is uh, economically a uh, well uh, developed region or beneficial reason, uh, region so that it is able to provide, um, provide uh, resources for the development and so on. So this is how the three uh, broad category we can divide the land of India. Now let us see about the land utilization. So how this land is utilized in India? That is what we are going to see. So we generally saw what are the types of land we have. Now let us see how we are going to utilize the land. The land utilization. Let us see. So, land resources are used for the following purpose. So, in India, the land is used for the following purpose. What are they? One is for growing forest, for keeping forest. That is a very important purpose. One is to have forest. Forests are very important for a nation. It is a good, it is there, it is needed for keeping the environment clean, for regulating the climate and so forests are very important. So if the forest is becoming lesser and lesser, then it will affect the climate, the climate will become hotter and hotter, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere will become less and carbon dioxide will increase and so So it will be very dangerous for uh, human beings and animals as well. Then the second one is the land used not available for cultivation. So there is plenty of land which is not suitable for cultivation. Let's see what are they. For example, there is a lot of waste land and bad land is there. So the land that is considered as a waste, we go and throw all kinds of waste there and we abandon it there, all kinds of grass and other things will be growing there. So that kind of land is not available for cultivation. And also barren land. Barren means the land that is not fertile. However hard we work, however how much water we pour, the production is very less. So the work that we do is much more and the harvest we get is very less. Therefore, that is considered as a barren land. Nobody wants to do work today. It is just abandoned there. Then there is land put to non-agriculture uses. So there are some lands are there which is used for non-agricultural purpose. For example, to make road, to make buildings, to make factory and so on. So, so many constructions that we need to do on the land. So that once we make the factory or the road or other things, it is not used for any other purpose, only for that purpose. So that is the second use. That is, the wastelands are there, some are the waste or barren land. Then it is also used for other purpose, construction. The land used for construction and so on. Then the third category is other cultivated land, the land that is used for cultivation. So these lands, waste land, barren land, the land used for construction, they are not used for uh, cultivation. Now let us see about land that is used for cultivation. So some are the permanent pasture and grazing land. So some land, other, this also uncultivated land, okay, not cultivated, I made a mistake. Again there are some more land which cannot be used for cultivation. This is waste barren and use for construction. There is another pasture land is there. 
for pastures. That is to feed the animals. We permanently keep growing the animals and we keep growing the grass as well. So some area is left for the animals to go and feed. India has got such a large animal population and therefore we need to think about providing fodder for them, food for them. So we need to have pasture land. So that land is not used for cultivation. Then land under miscellaneous tree crops or groves. So there are some areas where some kind of trees are growing. For example, we can see here and so a lot of pine trees are growing. We cannot call them forests, but few trees are growing here and there. Therefore, under that tree we cannot plant anything. It will be uh, futile. If you try to plant something there, it is not going to produce fruit. Therefore, that is a wasteland. So it remains uh, not wasteland. For cultivation it is a wasteland, but other trees are not is growing there. Then, culturable wasteland. So, culturable waste, wasteland means left uncultivated for more than five agricultural years. So, some lands are there, people are considering it as a waste because cultivating there also it does not produce enough fruit. Therefore, they just abandon it five years or more than five years, they don't cultivate at all. So, that shows that is also considered as a uh, culturally waste land. Then let us see about fallow lands. The fallow lands. Fallow means you know, keep it for some time for uh, recovering the quality of the soil. If you continuously cultivate uh, then the soil's quality is lost, the fertility is lost. So in order to regain its fertility, we keep it for some time without cultivating anything. That is called fallow land. So current fallow left without cultivation for one or less than one agriculture year. So some people leave just for one year or just leave for six months for without cultivation. For example, most of our paddy fields. We cultivate the rice, then we we'll just leave it free for the rest of the time, is it not? So, six months or seven months, it is left free. That is called fallow. We don't cultivate anything for after the harvest. So, there are some people who leave it for uh, uh, for fallow for less than one year. Then there are also people who leave it uncultivated for one to five agricultural years. So some people will cultivate once, then for next five years will not cultivate there. They will wait for five years to be over, then they will begin again. So such kind of soil may not be very good. That is why they are not interested in cultivating every year. Therefore, they, those lands, we cannot consider it as a land that is used for cultivation. Because they are cultivated very rarely, not very regularly. Then another type is net sown area. So net sown area, that is a real land that is used for agriculture or farming regularly. So area sown more than once in an agriculture year plus net sown area is known as, as gross cropped area. So the land that is used for cultivating the area sown more than once in an agriculture year. So sometimes uh, the situation is good, climate is good, we will be cultivating more than once in the, in the same place. Sometimes we do one crop, sometimes we do two crops or three crops and so on. So that area plus the net sown area, regularly what we are cultivating, that area Altogether, it is known as gross cropped area. So that is the area that is used for cultivating regularly. So this is how the land is used in our country. So some area is kept only for forest. Some areas are considered as a wasteland or barren land or used for construction of factories, houses, roads and so on. 
then some area is left for for growing grass so that the animals can eat and feed on the grass then there is some land used kept as a fallow land because the soil is not very good they cannot cultivate every year therefore they leave it for one year sometimes and sometimes for five years and so they leave it without uh, planting without doing any agriculture works then there are other areas are there which are very good we can do it more than two times in a year or three times in a year and so on so if you go to the northern plains and so on uh, at the sides at the bottom at the foothills of himalaya the northern plains are very fertile soil and there is no soil is left uncultivated everything is cultivated maximum because the soil is very fertile and it can produce a lot of good harvest so because of that the people go on cultivating there several times so that is a, a good thing so this is how the total land is divided for different purposes in india and how they are put into use so we shall wind up for today and we will continue to learn again for the future what are we what are the necessary thing about the land we need to learn what are the special qualities of our land all that we shall see in the next class so thank you for listening have a nice day bye